Multiple rounds of strong to severe thunderstorms are possible across several regions of Texas over the next 36 hours. Let's talk about in this special Sunday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning. It is Sunday, the 24th of September, 2023. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. We're going to make this a shorter than typical Texas weather roundup. We're not going to talk about three to five days out. We're just going to talk about mostly today and a bit of tomorrow to discuss the higher impact weather potential we could be dealing with over the next couple of days. First off, before we deal with any storms... How about this? High temperatures today. Records for late September. Forget fall. Mother Nature didn't get the memo, and she certainly does not care. 101 this afternoon in the Metroplex. 102 in Austin. 101 San Antonio. 98 to 100 in Houston. 100 in San Angelo and Brownwood. 102 in McAllen. 101 in San Antonio. 80s in the Panhandle in West Texas, so that'll be nice. Same thing for the Arklatex, but unfortunately across the eastern two-thirds of Texas, we're also dealing with dew points well up into the 70s, meaning heat index values approaching 110 degrees possible today. But crashy the cold front's on the way. And when you have this kind of an atmosphere in place ahead of crashy the cold front, you know crashy the cold front's going to have a bit of an attitude. And alas, it is. Here's the severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center for, generally speaking, this afternoon all the way through pre-dawn Monday. Uh, the potential for multiple rounds of thunderstorms. And we need to talk about some of the possible scenarios. This is not a written in stone forecast. There are some caveats we're going to have to discuss that could make or break the forecast and result in adjustments. But I would not be surprised if we have a level three risk introduced across portions of Texelma and North Texas and later outlook updates for this evening into late Sunday night and early Monday morning. And that would mean several severe thunderstorms possible. Otherwise, at this point, scattered severe thunderstorms highlighted and possible across the Concho Valley, eastern big country, the hill country, central Texas, northern Brazos Valley, all of north Texas, Texoma, the Arklatex, into portions of east Texas with a lower chance for isolated severe storms all the way down into the piney woods of east Texas, southeast Texas, south central Texas, back west into western portions of the Concho Valley, big country, into portions of northwest Texas. The most intense storms later to Today and tonight could have baseball size hail, perhaps larger. That is in the most intense storms, meaning the high end of the spectrum of severe weather mischief. Most storms will not have baseball size hail. Let's make that abundantly clear. Of course, if we have baseball size hail hit the Metroplex. It's not going to matter. It's still going to be a $5 billion hailstorm disaster because. Potential for damaging straight line winds of 60 to 75 miles per hour. The overall tornado threat very low, but not completely zero. Let's take a look at the high res rapid refresh model. Now, I'm going to actually let this play once, and then I'm going to pause it. And we're going to go through this frame by frame because I want to talk about the possible caveats of what you're looking at here and what overall could occur given the complex scenario. All right, here you go. 8 a.m. this morning. This is what the high-res rapid refresh model thinks things are going to look like at 8 a.m. this morning. A cluster of strong to perhaps severe thunderstorms across the Arklatex moving south along Interstate 20 from near Tyler all the way to Shreveport, Louisiana. Now, the exact locations here don't really matter. The main point is if that cluster of storms is there at 8 a.m. this morning, this model's got a good grip on things. If this cluster of storms is not there at 8 a.m. this morning, then most of what I'm about to show you is questionable data. And when you have bad data in, you have to be wary of the data coming out. Nevertheless, it is a possible scenario, and we'll talk about it. Okay, so here we go. Here's 11 a.m. You can see weakening cluster of showers and storms moving south across east central Texas, the Piney Woods, moving towards southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle play thank you you can see it actually does try to intensify a bit as it gets towards houston by 3 p.m this afternoon not guaranteed this is going to be a thing this is just one scenario but notice that cloud line extending west into the brazos valley around bryan college station that's going to be an outflow boundary on the trailing edge of this convection that's going to be moving west across the brazos valley towards south central and central texas if this scenario plays out Notice how that boundary by 5 o'clock is starting to spark off additional thunderstorms along the Interstate 35 corridor across central Texas, all the way down to the Victoria Crossroads. Certainly a plausible scenario. Temperatures near 100 degrees. Outflow boundary acts as that wave that will bust the cap through and allow for the possibility of isolated to scattered storms. 
Now, the reason I mention this is our main focus later tonight is going to be a cool front across southern Oklahoma into Texoma that's going to spark off a bunch of storms. But if this outflow boundary actually exists, we could have scattered storms further south this afternoon as well. Now, here's 7, 8, 9 o'clock. You can see a whole bunch of storms starting to fire up. Cool front across southern Oklahoma. You got hailers and damaging winds galore firing up near that front. If this model is right, we also have scattered storms popping up in the uh, Concho Valley east through the hill country in central Texas. Those Some of those storms could have hail, localized damaging wind gusts. And again, questionable scenario there. Uh, more likely, at least, is if this stuff further south doesn't happen, or even if it does, but even if it doesn't, it's a Sunday, leave me alone, I need coffee. This stuff on the cool front is a higher probability of happening. And you can see as that occurs, it's going to fly southeast tonight. The potential for storms across North Texas, Texoma, the Arklatex, Northeast Texas. We could have some big hail, damaging winds, heavy rainfall, localized flooding. As you see, by 6 a.m., this that cluster moves southeast into the Piney Woods. Now, I'm going to just keep let this play now. That's one possible scenario. We need to see... If we do indeed have this cluster of storms in East Texas this morning, how quickly the atmosphere recovers across portions of the Arklatex, Texoma, North Texas. If the atmosphere recovers this afternoon, yeah, we're probably going to have that second round of storms. If we don't have that first round of storms at all, well, then that just ramps severe weather chances up again later today. And it is entirely plausible we have multiple rounds of storms tonight into Monday morning across portions of southern Oklahoma, the Arklatex, Texoma, North Texas, even down to central Texas and east Texas. And again, given the summer-like atmosphere in place, crashy the cool front, certainly the potential for severe thunderstorms and multiple rounds of storms capable of a lot of lightning, heavy rainfall, hail, damaging winds. Now, does that mean everyone in the areas I just mentioned are going to get rain tonight? No. Does that mean everyone's going to get hit by hail? No. Does that mean everyone's going to get super strong winds of doom? No. Does that mean you're probably going to see some lightning nearby? Probably. All right, so that is the whole situation with that. Needless to say, we're going to have to update this forecast as we get into this afternoon. We'll get a better idea of exactly what's going to happen as we get a better sense of the mesoscale, the regionalized weather pattern setup where we have boundaries, and the micro scale, you know, over, say, a county area. If we have any sort of, um, you know, the outflow boundaries, we have any sort of secondary areas of low pressure that help enhance low-level wind shear in a given area. I know, isn't it fun? Welcome to severe weather. On the bright side... Here's Monday's high temperature forecast. Chance for a few strong to severe storms shifts south to the Interstate 10 corridor, all the way out from near Junction, the I-10-20 split in West Texas, all the way east through the Southern Concho Valley, the Edwards Plateau, the Hill Country, South Central Texas, into Southeast Texas and the Golden Triangle. North of that, you can see high temperatures tomorrow, 80s to about 90 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees cooler than today. Southern third of Texas, not so good news. And then here's Tuesday, same thing except temperatures. Southern third of Texas, cool off a couple of degrees. Overall highs across the state, 80s to lower 90s. But compare that to today, that's still about a 10 degree drop for most folks, if not a little bit more. So we'll take it. But again, when crash the cool front decides to roll on in later with this summertime environment in place, we probably are going to have some rowdy storms. We'll have storm chasers out and about. You'll be able to watch their live storm chasing video on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube channel. We'll also have that live in the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app and website. And of course, severe weather coverage from Baldy and Chief, yours truly, if necessary, later this evening. It probably will be, given the chance for someone to get hit on the head with baseball size hail. So with that being said, make sure you've got our free mobile app, Texas Storm Chasers. It's available in the Google Play Apple App Stores. And as always, you can just visit us on our website, TexasStormChasers.com. Radar is at TexasStormChasers.com slash radar. All right, we'll talk to you all again a bit later on today. Have a good Sunday. Stay weather aware. God bless.